Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the MuseCast with your two hosts slash co-hosts slash only people in the room, Ash Von Chamier and Ricardo Subueno. Ricardo Subueno. Good <laughs> evening, Ash Von Chamier. And welcome, hey. welcome to Cue the Muses. I'm remote. I'm in Wakulla. I had practice with Dave's last night. Tonight. It was That's great. Cool. Working on new music, having fun. Got to roll with Jason Adams at the Tiger Rock Jiu Jitsu Academy for a little bit. Super yeah. awesome. You got a black eye? Yeah, I got I got a well, I got a black eye from the top team down in Melbourne and it's getting oh. better. <laughs> okay, nice. Yeah, this yeah. lasts a little while. Black eye can last a few weeks. I've had a few of them in my my time. Yeah, I've got it I mean the black eye is just a visible thing. There's all sorts of stuff happens. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> it never I, doesn't happen. It's always right. there. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah it, but it dude, t- today's an exciting day. We're recording this episode on on Thursday night, and it's going to premiere this weekend. But today, you dropped a brand new video. Rough Cut Productions dropped the brand new. Yes, you, you, yes. you you take it, take it. Tell me all Thanks, about it. Thanks, man. Yeah, I, it's super exciting. It's a new car film for Trans Am Worldwide, who I've been doing videos for for the past decade. And those videos tend, like we've generated tens of millions of plays on those videos over the years. So that is absolutely where my my work has gotten the most exposure. And so we finally, we just put out a new one. Um, we actually put out one a couple of months ago. And what I wanted to kind of talk about a bit is like the Yuga, the Yuga tube, the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> or Yuga tube rhythm. The, the Yuga tube rhythm. <laughs> this is the inside lane of knowing what's really going on. Um, yeah. So I, so here's the thing. Like a lot of people haven't had a video that has gone viral before. And I've had quite a few of them through the Trans Am Worldwide stuff. And in fact, the most viral one was when I did the Burt Reynolds Bandit one. As far as velocity goes, that thing was number three top thing trending on Facebook as well for a full weekend when it came out back in the in the day. And that one over the course of time generated like 40 million plays somewhere in that neighborhood. And it was the bulk of them happened on Facebook by somebody that ripped our video, put it on their own Facebook page. And we didn't know we at that time, Facebook still wasn't like much of a place to put a video so that we didn't even think about putting putting it there physically. We just thought about sharing the YouTube link and it took off and somebody had done it and we just didn't want to kill the steam. And so we watched it skyrocket and we just told him, look, you got to at least we're not going to take it off because we want exposure and we're not going to kill the momentum. But you have to yeah. at least put more contact information on there so they know how to get a hold of, you know. Yeah, you know. yeah. Did they did they did they play did they play nice with you? They sure did. But you know, obviously that channel, we weren't the first video they did it to. The channel was basically focused on doing exactly just that. They would rip people's videos in particular from like car, car videos. Yeah. 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 And and put them on their own channel as Facebook video uploads so that way Facebook would highly endorse it versus what happens when you put up a YouTube link. Facebook doesn't share that much at all. Um, And so basically we make one of these every roughly one every year to year and a half. Um, In this case, we've switched around the whole battle plan here. Normally Trans Am Worldwide hires me directly to make uh, a video for a new model of car. In this case, we've switched it around where the customers that are purchasing these wild, insane muscle cars um, that sell for quite a... Pr- they start at 175000 and go up from there. And with all the bells and whistles, you know, you can... I don't know if I'm allowed to say how high the price officially goes, but over double well, what yeah. I just said. It goes, <laughs> so, goes super high. They go super yeah, high. It goes super <laughs> high. So it's like top of the end food chain. But what you get is these 1500 horsepower, handcrafted, fully carbon fiber built, you know, vehicles that are, well, watch the video like and you'll cars. find out. They really are. <laughs> they really yeah. are. Everything down to like every nut, everything on, like it's, everything's done as to the highest quality that can possibly be done. And so the new model is the Chevelle, I really should have pulled up some pictures that we could have looked at on here just so I could, I could feature. But you, if you know me, you've, you've probably already seen the video. But what I really wanted to talk about was like the algorithm and how this works. So, so normally the way that it's worked, even up to the, the last video that we did uh, that unveiled the Chevelle, that video currently has two and a half, over two and a half million plays on it. 
and we put it out last year, uh, last March, I think. So just over a year, we just crossed the threshold. Yeah. yeah of 2023. And that did very well. Uh, that took off like a rocket ship. And this is the way that they normally do. When you put up a video, normally you want to take advantage of velocity. Velocity is how fast in its first 48 hours it accumulates plays. If it does well with that, then YouTube endorses it and throws it out as more suggestions in the algorithm. It sure does. It offers it and suggestions are across all of YouTube accounts for 75% of the plays that all YouTube creators get. So suggestions by YouTube and when you're looking at your general homepage or you're doing a general search, that is the holy grail that you're trying to tap into. You want YouTube to suggest your video. Yeah. Yeah, and you want and, the guy. The guy looking up car videos is scrolling through, and then there's ten different car videos that show up. Yours is first on the list as the next one. He might have looked up something specific. Yours is right there behind it. That's how. Yeah, it's, that's how it's running. Totally. If they look up something somewhat specific that's related to whatever it is that you've created, then you want to hopefully be towards the top of that list. And as far as their home page, when you first go to YouTube, everybody every time you open YouTube every time, even if you refresh it, you're going to get a different batch yeah. of videos that it recommends. Just being on that period is a major deal. Now, I don't, I don't know how often it appears like that on people's pages, but we put out a video. So that, that one I mentioned two and a half million plays, that was a year ago. Now we don't make a video for a year. And then two months ago, we put out a new video. And this one was for the last Trans Am that they were building on the of the body style that they've been doing them on. It was a special edition, yeah. one-off Trans Am. That video was out two months ago. That video, when it first started, was a little bit scary because we put it out and the whole day went by and we only had, I want to say somewhere like maybe six, six to 9,000 plays in total for the whole first day. That is very low by comparisons and measurements of what we've experienced in the past. So we're like, man, we've had complete confidence in the quality of the video. Everyone that did watch it had insane things to say about it. So we're like, we know that we nailed this, but YouTube is not recommending us. Now, why is that happening? Is it that because we haven't made a video for a year, we're so low in the search ranking for, you know, YouTube rewards consistent content creation. Mm -hmm. also and taking a year break or we at the bottom of the barrel again um and i don't know if that was the case so then a few days goes by and we're still only at like 20 plus thousand plays which is like the lowest performance we've ever experienced for video then and during that time several online publications for car magazines put the video up on their page and you know are are talking about it. they wrote articles on it they share the video link etc the weekend hits and all of a sudden i wake up the next day and we just got like sixty thousand plays in one night which means that's other countries so overnight something happened where it got picked up and now other countries have been looking at it all night because they're in a different time zone than us so we wake up and it's like, whoa it, it just launched up that continued to happen that day. Then we got another 60,000 plays just over the business day. So we bumped up like over a hundred thousand plays in like, I want to say like, you know, 10 hours. And so we're averaging 10 over 10,000 plays an hour. And we're like, okay, now we're cooking that video currently after being out for two months, just broke 600,000 plays and it was put out two yeah. months ago. So, very happy with that, especially considering it, while it was a one-off trans, one-off Trans Am build, ultimately we've made quite a few videos about the Trans Am and that model. And so yeah. eventually you think it's going to run a little thin on the numbers. It's not going to do as big as like the unveiling of a whole product line, but 600,000 plays, the customer was ecstatic. Um, the lots of people want Trans Ams, but they're not selling them right now. You know, they stopped making the Trans Am for the next, at least at least year and a half to two years. And they're just focused on this new Chevelle model, this uh, tribute to the Chevelle. 
So the the video I said that has two and a half million plays, that was the unveiling of the Chevelle. That's the what they're switching the whole facility over to. So I won't tie up too much more of the podcast, but here's the deal. We put out the new video today with this with this one subject. But we did put out the new video today. It's a 23 minute documentary. It's long. It's a full film. I killed myself making it. It was a year of filming and documenting the build, um, which really was just like 12 filming sessions ultimately. And one of those being out of town in Biloxi, we went and filmed him receive the car. He landed in his private jet and we were able to get the, the car out onto the tarmac and park it in front of his private jet. And he literally on film saw it for the first time. He had not seen his completed car. So it's a really, it's a great, I mean, everyone that's watched it, the feedback on it is insane. I mean, people or like you can't top that video like you're not going to be able to top that one i'm like i don't i'm not I, even on the last two i'm like i can't top these things i'm just trying to compete with myself to make it as good as i did the yeah. last time if i can yeah. do that then mission accomplished because i'm like trying i i dig so deep on these artistically i mean these truly are an opportunity i get to create whatever i want you know whatever they uh, other you, than they give you free reign like, total um, free reign yeah. whatever you want to come up with just make a cool captivating fun video about this car, car. Or this model yeah that's it yeah. and from there i just take the idea and run and then ask for them to participate in this and can we film this and all that so they're huge it's it's so fun it's so rewarding so this thing comes out now here we are day one came out at 7 30 a.m right now it's 10 45 p.m if we look at the play count we are up to the last i checked it was only around like 3500 plays so again super low by comparison to what we are used to so let's see we're at oh okay i'm sorry we well that's interesting all right we're at 6500 plays so i think just in the last hour see this is kind of interesting because people don't get to necessarily experience this um to know how this actually works when you're following the algorithm so if we look at it looks like we just bumped up a couple of thousand plays in the last couple of hours. So that's good. I think the momentum's starting to pick up right now. Um, it's the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 15 hours ago. So I just looked it up on my phone and it says Trans Am Worldwide posted 15 hours ago. 4.9 is what it's showing. Uh, right. I'm looking. On my, okay. So there's another phone. thing. Yeah. No, and that and that's cool. So here's another thing to know, guys. If you have a video and you put it up on YouTube and you're you're watching it grow, so if you look inside your dashboard, which is what I'm doing, I have access to the inside of Trans Am's dashboard, mm -hmm. and without giving away too much, uh, yeah. I we're actually at six thousand five hundred and sixteen views as of this moment. Uh, no, I'm sorry, six thousand five hundred thirty two now 33 so so it's growing okay you're watching uh, it real time yeah i'm watching it in real time inside the dashboard but what happens is is your play count inside your dashboard isn't it's always uh potentially when it's growing fast it's more than what they'll show publicly and those plays like i think what it does is it's trying to cross check to make sure they're legit plays and then it publishes sure. them publicly onto the channel when you're checking in on your video on youtube via phone, via computer, you'll oftentimes see different numbers. And so yeah. it's refreshing differently on different devices and plat which doesn't even make sense to me, but it, it happens. It's weird. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think right now, this is just starting to really, just starting to catch on. But to be honest, I'm not anticipating to see significant pace until probably Saturday after it's been out three days and let the weekend catch and the articles come out and people, another thing with this video, because it's 23 minutes, that's a little intimidating to hit play on while you're at work. Yeah. While you're at work or a weeknight, you know, yes. I, I, my, my, my personal YouTube watching typically happens around this time right now. Like if, uh -huh. if, I'm, if I'm watching, it's kind of like towards the end of my night, I'm done with everything. I've ate dinner. You know, this is, I haven't ate dinner yet. Actually, I'm eating dinner after we get done with this, but yeah. you know, this is the time, this is the time, right? You know, you, right. you, yeah. you, you, you go to bed and you're, you're researching or doing whatever. Yeah. And this is when this is the, the prime time, but weekend for a lot of people is when it's happening. Like it sure, it sure might. And, and what really starts to set it off is the, the sharing of it and also engagement. I mean, the more that, that comments start to accumulate and then, 
through the Trans Am channel, which I'm not responding to anybody. I'm just approving some of the comments, but really it's up to to the owner of Todd, the owner of Trans Am to communicate back and forth as a, on the comment thread. The more that happens, the more it drives up your video and it, it just recognizes that, you know, hey, look, it's got, our like ratio is extremely high on our videos. So we we norm, we average somewhere around 98% usually on likes versus dislikes, which is pretty great, especially with, you know, you hit, get two and a half million plays and 98% of them are positive on a, the on badass, a, a badass custom handmade American sports car. You got to be a real troll yeah. to dislike. Well, here's the that. deal though that's that we're dancing with the we're we're walking on a tightrope over here or they are more than me because people are guarded these are remakes of classic cars that people absolutely love the first was the trans am that's not a real trans am it's like are you seeing what we're doing did you watch the video because you tell me what part of the factory line is better than you what's guys. actually happening here oh wait you're telling me it it's not it, it you telling me it gets more than seven miles to the gallon it doesn't have a carburetor <laughs> you know i don't have to to warm it up for 30 minutes when it's 52 degrees outside <laughs> no nah, man i don't want that piece of junk <laughs> right there's always going to be those people and then yeah. and that you know that's the trans am the chevelle is significantly more of a staple in the American muscle car history. I mean, the more people. Yeah, the era, the era and the Chevelle, you know, the, the Chevelle is, all, the Trans Am is an icon in like pop culture and it is an icon in, in car culture, but the Chevelle in car culture is the car. Like yeah, Exactly. This is some the, people's favorite car. The silhouette, like when you think, my favorite is a is a GTO. My favorite is like a, mm -hmm. a 60, 66. Which they did that too. Yeah, they right? did. They did. They, they did, did like the judge. They did like the judge yeah. version. But like yeah. the the silhouette of the Chevelle is what you think of when you think of a muscle car. The slope back, the tough tough front end, little boxy in the front, nice and curvy in the back. You know, yeah. just just tough looking car. Yeah, and they're dude, and they're they're awesome. And I, I'm Fantastic. I'm gonna get on there and comment on the video and, and get some I'll get I'll comment on the Trans Am video when we get done with this tonight and give a little <laughs> give a little we'll hop on the Chevelle one that uh, the Trans Am one's doing I saw, I saw the Chevelle video. <laughs> yeah. The we new video. Get that one <laughs> I sit there. Richard comment delete. <laughs> Man, it's um yeah it's it's just great and so I just kind of want there was something else I wanted to mention that people don't know either when it comes to these but I, I it'll probably come back to me over the course of our little podcast here but it no it's exciting it's fun to watch it um once it starts to take off it's always super exciting to see the numbers grow and um yeah i mean hopefully this for me as far as rough cut productions goes this is an, a pretty uh big moment because it's the first of the full documentary production package that i offer it's the first completed one and that's, you know, basically I offer multiple production package options, and this is the highest tier one that you can purchase. And, no way. Uh, so this is the first, this is the first time someone said this, we want, we're going all in. We want your full package. I have, I have two to three more of those. The, the other guy's almost definitely going to do his too. So I've, I've basically got four of these lined up, and this is the first one where the car was completed so I could finish making this one. So he gets it first. And then there's there's definitely two well there's actually three more and then a fourth that's doing the full but the the uh, one of those other <laughs> there's four total one of them's just a final product video so it's like once it's done some awesome fun it's like a visual blast video of just the finished car showing it off and getting awesome shots but yeah. the other three are all the the highest tier package as well you know and there's some really exciting stuff happening that I can't even talk about that's expanding. But but the reason this is so important is that, you know, this kind of seals the deal on on people being interested in getting that package. And for Rough Cut Productions, because this is working out the way that it is, this is a major part of me being potentially booked out for the next year and a half with how many people are interested in getting these videos done. So there's that many more interested parties. I've got I've got you've got you've got a you've got a 
series. Yes. I mean, re and like realistically, what do you customer have customer build like, series for the Trans Am channel? Documentary series of these cars, and that's huge. That's, that's very that clear. that is getting millions of plays. Let's yes. face it. The, this this Chevelle's video that dropped today, it might be sitting at six point seven right now. Let's yeah. look at it again at the end of the weekend. You're gonna it's yeah. gonna be huge. I mean, I, so I'm at the if I can if we can if each of these can break five hundred thousand plays, that in itself is already a win. Anything past that is like gravy. And I do hope they generate millions each, but there's no doubt what happens is is that you you know, we still get spillover onto all the previous videos every time one of these takes off. And that's what's so cool about, you see, the that's channel the is the next whole, one in the queue. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So the whole channel just continues to grow. And it, while we talk about this amount of plays, I'm not even talking about the other thousands of plays that are happening on the other videos. And literally, there's only, there's only two videos in the playlist of Trans Am's YouTube channel that are, like, one of them's not mine. It was the the um the pr the tr teaser or commercial advertising the discovery channel um series of it because they did a six season episode for discovery channel that i helped participate in filming as well and okay. that has has a commercial on, in the playlist and then there's one other video where i was like really hesitant to do it i was handed off from todd footage that he shot on his cell phone at a car show and he wanted me to put something together and i was like i will try and if and it's you know you look at both the discovery channels commercial has like i think twenty seven thousand plays on it and then his video that i made with his cell phone has like somewhere around thirty thousand plays and then you look at all the ones where i've gotten to do everything from start to finish and the lowest play count is a quarter of a million and then on the highest end, we're at uh, at the highest end is Burt Reynolds on YouTube's upload at five million, and the one beneath that is the Super Duty at like th over three and a half million, and the Chevelle at two and a half million. So I mean, these are all in the millions and hundreds of thousands. Um, so it makes me it's very exciting, man. It's really cool, and a lot of people I, when I talk to crews think that a full crew is making these, you know, I get kind of like yeah, the director yeah. did a great job overseeing the project. I got a message uh, today from the owner of this car. He was communicating with a guy that I can't say the name of the show, but it's, it's, he, he's actually the producer for a show that's on TV now. And he said, whoever the producer is, I would be proud of that. Thinking that I just oversaw was, the project. The whole like, thing. Yeah. yeah I did yeah. everything, bro. Like no, I, I, Thought of it, filmed it, edited it, interviewed it, lit it, at, you know, color graded it, did all the audio, sound, mic'd everybody. You know, it's, it's you guys with all cool. this overhead and all this extra money laying <laughs> yeah. around to pay all these people. Here comes the ninja. Here <laughs> comes, here comes the ninja who's just breaking <laughs> all the rules and doing all this awesome stuff. I gotta be honest, man. It does make me feel good. I and, and it's not that I want to do everything totally solo. It just makes me think, man, if I had the budget and a little bit of a team, how far we could go. And so that is kind of where my headspace is at. I think over the course of the next year to two years, I mean, I've, I've, I'm gonna be working with somebody. I got somebody coming out of town with me next month. I'm talking to another film guy. I'm gonna to start to network a little bit more, but I, I am a, I'm kind of a picky guy when it comes to, yeah. you know, who I'm gonna bring into the fold and teach what I know how. And I, and I want them to have something that I don't have too. I'm hoping I'd like them to add to the equation so I can learn as well. And the people that I'm talking to now fit both of those bills. They, they each kind of have their own thing with this and that. And it's, it's very exciting. I might've also met an editor that can help for project prep. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't involve me hands on the whole time. Like I like putting it together, color grading it, making it sound and polish out great and picking out all the music. But as far as just going through raw footage and figuring out what's even usable, and data management and all that that takes a lot of time and i could definitely that's, um, it's like the, that's that the out. that's the busy work side of it right yeah it really I mean, is but, like yeah. yeah yeah so i but, i talked about that way longer than i meant to man i'm looking at the the no, number no. it's like 20 well that's months. it that's that's the most exciting thing you know i'm i'm up here in tallahassee i'm not going to get to see you this this time around i'm here for work and practice and stuff but you know that what you did today dropping that video and that that accomplishment is the that's the biggest thing happening right now 
I mean, right other on. than other than our little show, she oh, yeah. loses that. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Yeah. Off this podcast that tries, that's... you know, but. That, my that, ultimate that, love. I mean, if I could do absolutely anything, you know, I like that, making that, these a lot and I want to continue making them, but cue the muses. I want that to at least be at a minimum 50% of what I do or cue the muses and things like it collaborations with musicians and music videos and shorts and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I'd like that to be 75% of what I do. And then I just come right. in and do like three massive car films a year or something like that. And that's the whole right. year is just that shit. Well, car videos are pretty damn bitching. I mean, they're fun. Not, you know, if if I couldn't do yeah. music, but I get to do these awesome, awesome muscle car things, yeah, that's pretty damn cool. It's, second choice. It's so cool, dude. <laughs> and it's it insane. And Absolutely, it yeah. yeah. And, and and it's in Tallahassee, Florida, because it's not like there's that many options. I mean, I feel I have so much gratitude to, that th this was even an opportunity. But I will just to, you know, voice it, you know, guys, if you're starting your own business, because I've been at this for 20 plus years now, you know, it will not just come to you. You have to. I mean, I'm just giving you the suggestion. You, you, you have to look it. for it. You got a cold call. You got, that's how this whole relationship started was a, it started off with a cold email that got I got rejected with. Yeah. And just because you get rejected doesn't mean. It doesn't mean that it's over. It's not. That's that's just to be. I thought I, I know it, it's like it, what happened was the guy at the front counter rejected it. He said, we appreciate it, but blah, blah, blah. And then the owner came across that email like two, three weeks later. He just stumbled across it. And it's like, what's this? And then he reached out to me. And at that time, my reel that I had that I had submitted was literally yeah. just shit. I shot predominantly in my backyard with my new camera. Which was yeah. a cool property. I mean, there was cool nature and stuff, and there was like yeah, bugs there. and a raccoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah the bird sink. That's yeah. where I was living at the time, and and so that that was it. That was like what I had to like power pitch that I wanted to make a video. But I I, I offered to do it for three hundred and fifty dollars. That's the price I threw out there, and then I took it. To get started, he, he, he's like, yeah. okay, <laughs> you know, like I mean, for him thinking at a, of it as a business guy. Even if this sucks and I don't use it, it's worth the shot. You know, three hundred fifty dollars. This guy's gonna bust his ass on a video. Let's see if he can do it. And yeah. I took three hundred of it and bought a GoPro so I could have the shots that were mounted on the car. You there know? you go. So I made fifty dollars on that, and that didn't even yeah. actually. I spent it on gas <laughs> and yeah. hard drives. You, I went in the hole making it. Yeah. But that's what it takes. That's what it yeah, takes. It's, that's it's, right. You take you take a chance. You it's a calculated risk, right? I mean, you're you're like you you, you go out on a limb. It's not too much. I mean, you're talking three hundred fifty bucks, but it's also that first step, and that's the bigger yeah. part of it. That that first blind leap. You calculate, find your angle, and go for it. And don't don't not do anything just go yeah Let's and do don't it. and and Basically. don't only work as much as you got paid you have to work no. this is like your opportunity to do a portfolio you have access to to making something with that people might actually look at you better make it the best for portfolio piece you can do go you have to work past what you're paid for for it to to build up that portfolio yeah because it, it, it it's going it's going to come back Evident, you know, evidently it has. It's it's yeah. doing it. That's what happens. You yeah. put it in, you get what you put in to any yeah. anything like that. Well, the next video I made for them was a short documentary. Well, it was like a fifteen or sixteen minute documentary. I'd never done something like that. I signed on to doing it and I was so I once I start I was I got them to go for it and I started filming it and I realized I have no idea what I'm doing. This is so scary. I don't know. Where do I even start on putting this together? I mean, I did an interview and I don't even know, like, wh how do I start building this? I had never built something, but I charged 3,500 for that. So I, I literally charged 10 times the amount just in one gig. You know, I went from the first one, one to two. the second one, 10 one, times. Two, and when he said yes to the 35, which he thought about for a moment, um, I was like, holy shit, like I could actually, maybe I can do this for a career. So I was like, I'm going to kill this. And then I went in and started doing it. And I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing. There were so many moments of absolute despair of me thinking I'd gotten in way over my head and I was going to have to give the money back. <laughs> but you can't do that. You can't tap no. out. You can't no. tap out from the pressure. 
<laughs> I delivered a video and, and I got to watch it. A lot of times I get to watch it with the owner. Me and Todd are good friends at this point. I mean, we're, we're definitely very good friends. Todd came Todd. to Bolivia, right? Todd? Todd? No, no, that was Tom. So, he came okay. into the Another equation team. much later. He built the Super Duty. So Todd is the actual owner of Trans Am Worldwide. Okay. And he, you know, he had tears in his eyes at the end of the second video I made, you know, because he's like, it, it, it was a documentary on them and what they're doing. This was back at Trans Am Depot. Yeah. And he, you got to see what, and then I realized how powerful this medium is. It's like, holy, you know, like when I watched it back, I was like, these guys don't know how amazing what they're doing is. I mean, they do, but when they saw it that way, it just, you're, it was like an epiphany, you know, it's like, putting, holy you're shit. It in another, you're giving them another perspective of it. You're letting them see what they do in a light that only you were able to show them. Yeah. Right? And that's like that, that was, that was the clinch. That was where, that was what locked it in. Right. It, it, it was that, that moment for sure. It was a reality check for me. It was a reality check for them. And it was like, cause I realized I had, I like, Hey, I can actually do this. Like if I, this is only my second time, try, first time ever trying a documentary and I got some tears to happen, you know, it's like, this is amazing. And that, that video did well. I mean, it got like, you know, I think we broke 150, thousand plays on it this is back when you know youtube was still wasn't even allowing you to put a video longer than 10 minutes unless i remember, I remember that yeah we had to break it up into two parts i didn't even know that that was a stipulation we had to break it up into two parts and so it kind of squashed the plays a little bit but it, it anyway it, it all worked out we re-uploaded it as a single video later and then it got another like 100 plus thousand plays and all that but you just <laughs> No, no, it's like, it's a wild ride. But yesterday, actually, the last thing just is kind of fun. This is just an example of how, you know, me, how much me and Todd, the owner of Trans Am, get off on this. So I finish exporting the video. I've been up 14 hour days, seven day weeks, three weeks, three or four weeks in a row since I've been back from Texas. There are months of editing leading up to me even going on that trip to Texas. And we get back and I finally finish it up. I'm exporting it. It, cut, it gets out. And we're gonna, and I'm about to watch it as the first proof because I don't get to see it completed until this final export happens. It gets so graphic heavy with the color grade that you can't watch it back in real time until it's exported. So I export it. I'm about oh, yeah. to watch it in the office for the first time. Todd texts me and he's like, "So what time? When do?" You? I told him it would be done, you know, that day, which was two days ago. He's like, "When will it be uploaded?" And I'm like it's a massive file. I'm about to proof check it. Once it's uploaded, then it'll be, you know, a few hours of upload. Then it might, depending on how much traffic there is, it's going to take a few hours to process, maybe an hour. It'll be tonight. And then it's like, I can't wait. This is, I'm so excited. And I was like, you want to just come over and watch the proof check with me? And he's like, when? I was like, like right now. And he's like, I'm on my way. <laughs> so, and he came over and watched it with me the first time. And we're both giggling and getting giddy at watch. Cause I throw it, a, you know how I go. Yeah, it's yeah, a 65 yeah. inch OLED. I crank up the stereo. We're going to watch it and hear it loud and proud. And, uh, he was, he was absolutely floored. He thought I raised the bar and I was, you know, so he, it was, it was fun, but that's what's so fun about that relationship. He loves making these things too. So we both, it's a, a collaboration for sure. That dude, it, it that's that's human human this whatever this is human. that's us that's yeah. us and cue the music like dick you know when i message some people or collaborate with some people like you are like me in that well and todd is similar in this way it's just that it's with the car stuff we will just keep talking about this stuff until the cats come home i mean it's we right. don't get off yeah. subject we're just like so excited and we're and I think I really, you know, I think that that's important. You know, sometimes I've definitely had a lot of situations collaborating with different people, both musically and in video world, where there's just crickets to some extent. It's one line no. of responses, even if they like something, it's like, there's no momentum. Let's get some momentum happening yeah, and, and yeah. help this grow like fire, there's, you know? there's re There really is something to like individual wavelengths between create cre creativity amongst people person to person you know you and i work together like we do and there's a reason for that and it's something to do with you know our just our mindsets are on a similar wavelength and you and todd are obviously on the same thing it's a similar wavelength because 
I've had band experiences with other musicians that, you know, in a, in a room with you, we click, we talk about things, we go down avenues and there's always, it's always flowing. And I've been in experience with other musicians, not, not bad musicians, great musicians, but sure, there's just totally. no, you know, that feeling, just like you said, they're like, there's a block there. There's an uncom. there's a level of uncomfort or awkwardness or whatever it is. And it just turns into a wall. Mm -hmm. And it's not, and it's an incompatibility issue. And like a long time ago, I used to have it with some, some, whoever it was, a drummer or a vocalist or another guitar player and not anything against the person individually. It's just weird. It's like, it's just like, it just doesn't click. There's no, there's no chemistry there. The wavelengths are yeah. too different and they're, they're, they're fighting each other. And that's mm -hmm. a big, that's a big thing for success too. You know, you have to surround yourself with, if you're if you're solo, it's a different story, right? Then with you, your wavelengths are with your clients, and right. you work independently. But people in a team environment, like at my job, I work in a team environment, and it's a lot of individual tasks. But everyone has to gel. Everyone has to be able to be on a similar wavelength to be successful. Because if you can't be compatible with someone and work with them, you're not going to get. The level of, you're not going to put the output you're going to get the output that you need with that other individual there because you're 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 hindering one another for whatever reason it could be and it's like it's a just an important part of success in general i think to surround yourself with people that are on a similar wavelength that you are i i totally agree and i i think the energy of there i almost feel like um the best way to approach some <laughs> Well, this is just me in my own head, I guess. I can't say this the way people should think. <laughs> but I feel like I'm, I, it's like, all right, we have an idea. We want to make this thing happen. And then you run into hurdles where that doesn't work for whatever reason. This could be how a song goes. It could be how we just lost access to a location. It could be somebody isn't going to be in something that said that they were going to be. It could be anything. But it's some kind of hurdle that seems like, okay, we're on pause. But you don't pause. I think of it like you're water and you're like trickling through and you're going to find whatever cracks. So you keep flowing all the way down until you get to the yep. ground or whatever, or wherever. You know, it's like there is no stopping this. There's no container that's going to hold it completely. There's a leak somewhere and the water's going to go there. And being sensitive and, and flexible enough, pliable yeah. enough, fluid yep. enough that you'll just and then also accepting that maybe that's exactly what's making this thing what it wants to be it's like you you don't you don't get what you want or what you are striving for you're you're, you're shooting for whatever that is a, a direction in a song a, a location or a shot and then it doesn't happen for whatever reason it doesn't work out for you you don't you don't get the position that you wanted but there's an opening there's going to be another opening and if your mind is stuck on of not letting go mm -hmm. of where of what you wanted you're missing everything else you're missing right. all the opportunities all the opportunities are still there there's no shortage they're always there you just have to be looking to see them you have to be aware and and be and be able to let go the important thing is being able to let go of something that you were going for to go for something else and nine times out of 10 or whatever, it's going to be just as good. Or even that's where the magic is. Like you said, that's, mm -hmm. that's that part. That's the fun part because that's what you never expected. And then it's even more incredible than you ever thought because you didn't think of it. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Oh, I, th <laughs> I mean, it makes total sense to me because I've tested it a million times and that's the way it works. I used to be a lot more stubborn about thinking something needed to be a certain way or it's not worth doing, you know? Yeah. And, and that is all you're doing is creating, like you said, it's, it is a wall yeah. and, and the, and it, it, that the art of not, of allowing yourself to just let your, to see wherever it wants to go okay. and be open to the idea. Is it your internet connection or mine? You have become frozen in time. Oh, ladies no. and gentlemen, Ash is Am frozen, I frozen in time. In oh, time. You're playing in perfect <laughs> harmony for me. Can you see me? Can you hear well, me? Well, we are at 39 minutes, guys. I don't know if oh. Ash has lost his internet connection. What's going to be really funny is, maybe he, uh, is if... Um, Hopefully not. As if this is... <laughs> I'm going to go internet. ahead and shut her and down, then... though. Guys, thanks for listening. I'm Dick. That's Ash. Oh, now he's back.
I was about I, to close it down. Dude, you know what's hilarious? I <laughs> I could I could see you and hear you the entire time, perfect, no freezing or anything. Yeah. And I don't know which end it was, but I if I was thinking if somebody can see this happening, what I'm seeing, where you're like, well, I can't see when I'm talking to you, and I'm like, I can see you. I'm right here. Don't turn it off. How funny! You were frozen be. on your side. You were like this. I believe you. I believe. <laughs> Well, it'll be a funny episode to watch. I'm going to watch this part back. So we're at the 40 minute mark. We'll see what yeah, actually perfect. what actually happened. But I could see and hear you the whole time. So it's hilarious. Um, <laughs> and we're talking about getting past shit and like deal with problems. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see you later. We're broken. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's broke. Well, um, right, well, hey, there is something else that I wanted to talk about, though. I, you threw up and I haven't even like I've been in full blast, but you threw up a logo of Atlas Studios and it seemed like there was a post. Yep. I'm sorry. The Atlas Atlas Productions. I did. Productions. A, I'm, I'm work. I'm working on logos. I'm working on logos right now. So, it the the that one looked really is, cool. Yeah, I do. I'm, I'm going with like a like a like a nautical map theme. You know, Atlas as in a map. Yeah. And yeah. you know, it's the the studio is almost there. It's so close. The drum set sounds so good in the room. The room sounds so good. It's not a big room. It's a it's a smaller room, but it sounds so good in there. Kyron had a couple of uh, high school kids over. He's he's starting another little band down in Brevard. He had a drummer and a guitar player come over, and they were jamming in there. It sounded phenomenal. Just they were doing uh doing a couple of Nirvana covers. They were working on In Bloom. And they worked on In Bloom for a little while, and it was good. It sounds, you know, that angsty. They're all teenagers, angsty yeah, teenage yeah. Nirvana is perfect. It's so good. But I've got when, uh, when you say that it's sounding so good, are you saying that your your recording quality that you're getting at, or just the oh, room no, no, no. itself I, I didn't, physically I didn't sounds so good? The room sounds good. I haven't oh, recorded. Cool. I have. I haven't recorded them. They just they sound good in the room. I've got. I made a couple of breakthroughs um, with some rough mixes I was messing with. And I, I found, uh, I, I basically, I, I stumbled in and accidentally figured out how to use multiband compressors very well. I just, for whatever it was, I hadn't really messed with it too much. I started getting in a multiband compressor and really separating and, and spreading out the individual instruments within the mix using the multiband compressor. And I've also got a couple of pieces of hardware. I talked to Brett. And I was like, you know, I want to get some good vocal preamps. You know, what what would you recommend for vocal preamps? He said, Nave ten seventy three. And you know, I'm I'm not a I'm a recording guy, but I'm not a traditional recording guy like he is. So I didn't know yes. what it was. I was like, cool, I'll look it up. Oh, yes. that's what a Nave ten seventy three is. Cool. I got a clone. <laughs> I got two clones. I got oh, two wow. clones, and it's they're actually I haven't hooked them up yet. They're at my house down south. They got delivered today, and uh, and an eleven seventy six compressor, and that's going to be my vocal chain. And it's the beginning of something that's going to be super super cool. The first Kurt's going to come down and track some stuff soon, um, and my guys from Days Last Night are going to come down and finish tracking the album. So it's it's going to get set up. I am going to open the studio up for business pretty soon talking to some some local friends here get it you know just like you said you know it's it's not something i'm doing full-time because i do work full-time and and you know I have, I have a day job but it is a passion that i want to do you know i'm not trying to start a recording studio to make millions of dollars because that's not the way it works anymore you know bands don't have budgets for albums because nobody's buying albums record labels don't have big budgets for albums because nobody's buying albums so there's a weird time in the world right now where there still are these high-end recording studios with millions of dollars of equipment inside of them but they don't they don't generate the same profit so now it's like now they're more like i don't know how they operate i know tom tapley travels around studios uh, he They'll, people will fly him in, record at a recording studio, and then you know ship him out and pay him for his time. And I might talk to him about coming down when I start tracking at my studio. You know, 
hire him to fly in and help out with engineering on some drum oh, tracks. Wow. That's that's going to be the next step because it, when we were up there in Atlanta with him, he told us he was like, "Hey, you know, I travel, guys. You know, just call me up and you know come down and and work on drums because Brett Brett Hasslud, who did our album, is yes. like the he's the best engineer I've ever worked with doing vocals. You know, the 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 mixes he does are phenomenal. Working with Tom was like such a different like monster because it, all we did was drums with him. You know, we we just went up there and tracked the drums and it was a whole other element that I never saw before. You know, and he was, you know, it's a he has like a 32 channel analog mixer, a whole different environment. Everything was just so, so different. And it opened my eyes up and I can't stop. You know, you know that feeling you like you're like, I have to understand this. I want, this is something yeah. I, this is a, this is a skill set that I need. And I'm, I'm like in my, my YouTube algorithm right now is nothing but uh, preamp mixes, uh, you know, running external inserts and jujitsu. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. That's all that comes up in my, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now it's going to be Chevelle's and Trans Am stuff. Cause I'm going to be having your stuff on my YouTube. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, you it, said yeah. I, I have a technical question for you. So you said that you got two of the the clones of the knees. Yes. Yeah, I got two what's, two knees. What's the purpose of having two? Purpose of two is because I'm so if I was only worried about doing vocals, I would skip one. But having two means that's the beginning of my drum channel as well. So the drum channel having two, that's the start. That's this kick drum and the snare drum. Okay. Now, the 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 Neve the Neve clones that I got, they're 1073 EQs. So they have the Neve EQ. Now the Neve EQ is a, a, it's a three band equalizer, but the three band equalizer has a selectable sweep. What I've what I've really went down the rabbit hole on is EQ ranges that are predetermined predetermined points on the mids, the lows, and the highs. And then you can adjust, attenuate between preset points on the on the range. So the low each each EQ knob will have two two dials on it. One selects the range, whether it's you know ten hertz, thirty hertz, forty hertz, and then then there's the the attenuation, the dB, the boost, or the cut. Okay. And 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 now that the preamp part of that means that you you can set it so that when it comes in the eq is there and you have to be careful i have to do a lot of trial and error with this you have to be careful because it's not post eq it's right. really good what i've been doing with my studio is running recording with a dynamic microphone a sure sm7b the one you're talking into mm -hmm. that sm7b is just a really good dry mic that doesn't pick up sound of the room i cannot hear what it sounds like in your record in your office right there so, right, and I'm testing uh, this now so you guys can think about that while I talk like a robot. That's right. That's right. But pre pre processing <laughs> pre processing the signal as it comes in does a couple of things, and the biggest thing that I'm getting it for really is because you can get that thing sounding so good on the way in that the performer it sound they hear they hear themselves, and you don't want to. You don't want to like throw a bunch of effects on the performer, like a bunch of reverbs yeah. and delays. It sounds cool, but what they're going to do is they're going to use that as a tool and then their voice, you're not going to get that performance. Like what I'm really focusing on is having the chain, a signal chain, and also to run, you know, two EQs means two mics with an EQ on it. Single compressor means, you know, I'll only be able to compress one at a time on the way in, but I'll be able to compress it later in Pro Tools. But having that... Mm getting the best getting them to sound as good as you can get them to sound and boost that confidence level and that it's bringing out the the performance Absolutely. and that's 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 where I want especially for for Kyron and his young kids they're jamming and like I'm talking to some people in in the Brevard music scene like I had a long conversation with with a gentleman who's in a couple of bands his name's Matthew um he's uh he is the drummer for a band called Fields of Saturn down there. Really cool guy. But he, he was telling me, he's like, all these bands in Brevard, everything's in flux. You know, right now, bands are switching members. They're starting new bands are starting up. And it's a, like a blossoming time in the scene for them down there. 
And he was like, everybody's going to be looking to record. He said, Their new bands are going to want to have new music, mm -hmm. right? I was like, yeah. well, I just opened up shop. So let's, you know, we'll, fig we'll figure that one out. Get in, get over here to the house and we'll do it. <laughs> totally. That sounds like <laughs> but, so much fun, man. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be like weekend warrior stuff, evening stuff. I'm super excited about the hardware additions, the room, the tracking room. When you guys come down, I think we're talking about getting together for a show um that we're all going to go to that i actually need to talk to you about offline but it's the uh what was what was the show <laughs> king crimson are we talking about king crimson we king, again we talked about it on our last episode <laughs> okay. when we you guys come down our whole episode was named <laughs> after it <laughs> I don't know why. I had I talked about so much stuff. I had a brain fart. I'm like, we're going. To, and I'm going to. When a you lot couldn't of, remember what it was, I was like, are we talking about a different show? I'm going. Give me some credit. I'm going to a lot of concerts in the next. You're all good, this bro. Year. That's fine. <laughs> but yeah, when you guys come down, it's 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 a really fun room. Like I I can't explain how rewarding it is. You have your your editing room and, and your place in there and now that like i have it's legit like yeah it it feels good it looks good and it's more most importantly it sounds good it's like mm -hmm. i i went down the rabbit hole of design purposefully built the space and when i sit at my station now i mean i've had the same desk the same speakers the same computer the same preamp for 10 years yeah and i've always had it i've always just had it in the house you know, yes. and one time I had it here. I mean, well, Carla, one time I had it here in the rehearsal space for days last night, Fighting Giants. You've been in that room. We wrote a yes. lot of our album, the Key to Muses album, in yeah. that room. Definitely. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a jam room, but it's not a recording room. It wasn't mm -hmm. built purposefully like that. And this room that I have down there is just uh, when you come down and sit down. I'm looking forward to it. Like you sit down at the desk, and when you hear it in that space, it's like, holy crap, it worked like all yeah. the dimensions and the materials and the angles and this you know everything just comes together and it's every and i go i'm going back to these mixes like that doesn't sound right and when i get it right wow like it's just it's such a cool experience yeah you well two things one i totally identify with what you're saying it, it, it it's like when you put the investment in and the time and the effort and then you actually end up with the equipment the space dedicated to it it's such a driver for it's like exciting it's like it makes you f take what you're doing so much more seriously that it's it's kind of it's, it's super empowering it yeah. really makes you feel like you know like the only thing limiting this right now is me getting more experience with this being in here more and getting to do what i can do in here more and, and I, and it's like, how far can I go with this? And you start thinking like, I can go really far. And the further you go, the more it endorses more investment in other stuff that continues to help it grow. And then before you know it, you're doing stuff that it's like, holy shit, man. Like I can make stuff that is like, I couldn't have dreamed of making this a few years ago, you know, like this it's yeah. accessible. I just needed to have the time and the, and the space to really know, take myself seriously enough to go for it this far. And uh, so I, I think it's beautiful that you're setting that up and it's, it got, it's, I, I can't help but want, I might, I might get a single, like I'm not trying to record other bands, but just to be able to record tracks so we can start collaborating more remotely and building, you know, more Q the Muse stuff next year. Cause I would like for us to write some more stuff, maybe towards yeah. the end of this year or beginning of next year. Um, and, and I might, I'm I'm I might all, invest already... a little bit already been writing stuff it's oh well that's the thing like i just need to, <laughs> that's the thing i, I want to lay down some of these riffs because i i do i i you know i've got more than we would put together for a single album already to be honest i mean in respect to knowing that you'll help finish the songs like i've got enough parts for easily four four songs if we each did four that'd be eight that'd already be three more songs than we did on the last album so the the material and it's only but it, it i will say I, it is evolving a lot for me because of all the things i'm exploring with my guitar practice and it's opening doors to stuff that i never even would have thought about in particular if there's one thing that's really been the most liberating thing to be working on with like getting better at guitar it's learning the intervallic 
scale method. It's a totally different approach to how to explore scales. And it breaks you out of the boxes that are typically there when you're learning modes and learning sectional, like in chunks. Uh -huh. You A lot of times if you're watching a player, especially like me, and they're soloing or something or free jamming or even with the way they were, they're kind of in this quadrant. And then when they move, even if they're moving to another section of the guitar, they're kind of in another, now they're in another box. You can identify what that box is. It's like, I know that pattern. That's that the intervallic method is it, it breaks it into even smaller chunks. So it's not all sectional, like with the full, like four fret area. And it's actually more in like three string clumps that stretch across eight frets and you learn how to do the scale the same scale with every finger um if you have a root note you take turns with each finger being how you start the scale of that root note and so now okay. you're learning it on both ends rather than just in the one section where you always start with your index finger as the beginning of that scale it's yeah. like no now start the scale with your middle finger and then now play the scale this way because now you can reach these notes that are before and then now play with your ring finger. Now you can only reach this note over here. And now you can go do all these notes. And so you have four patterns of how to approach each chunk of the scale. And it's all the same scale. And then you, and then you do that everywhere that note happens on the fretboard. So if you were learning D, you'd go to every spot the D is, and you'd learn that same concept, starting the root note with each individual finger and how to make that pattern happen. And it, it it sounds possibly more complicated than it actually is. It's like at first, and I'm like, well, that feels kind of so so small. I'm, pic I'm, and I'm picturing it because you're you're, yeah. you're using the same scale, but when you start with a different finger and you're running through a scale, it it it's going to change the way you approach. It's going to change, you know, change. You're not doing the same sequence, right? Or are you doing? It's the, the same, it's the same technical notes, but it's absolutely yeah. a different pattern with what you can reach yeah. within those four frets from that finger. So you're learning it rather than all right here. You're, if the root notes in the middle, let's say you're learning how to play it all the way out this way and all the way this way. And yeah. every time you start with a different finger, there's a different pattern sequence that you can use. Yeah. And so yeah, 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 then yeah. you, and that's just the top string. Now go to the next string, you know, now go to your A string. Where does the D happen on your A string? Cool. Figure it all out there. Then go to your D string. Where does the D string start on the D string? And you could start at the 12th fret if you want. And you do this over and over again. And then it gets a little bit interesting when you get to your B string. Because now, it, you know, you have to compensate for the fret moving up. Some. But what happens is it's like I'm, I, when I, and so now I've gotten in a habit of free soloing over like backing guitar tracks and stuff. And the difference between now and even a few months ago exploring this method, it, it is truly night and day. I mean, as far as my comfort level for constantly being able to know where I'm at on the fretboard, it's I, it's so much more comfortable. I, like the doors are unlocking. I, it it feels so much more fun and liberating, and you start realizing how much of the tonal, how how different you will approach it, starting from a different pattern shape, because a lot of how you play things is going to be based on the shapes that are available. Paul Gilbert's really big on that. He's like, yeah. a lot of times he'll think of something that's a cool shape pattern. Like it's not even like yeah, a yeah, musical yeah. thing. He'll just think of what's a cool shape that he yeah. could do fast. And then you see what you end up with, right? So you have that aspect, but then there's also just the aspect of actually understanding the fretboard in so many areas. Cause you get, you get lost if you think of it all as six frets all the way up and down to just know all of a sudden I'm on the seventh note of the scale or I'm on the fifth note of the scale, you get kind of lost in that chunk because it's so much clustered together, breaking it into just these single section, single section of just this much, just an eight note pattern or an yeah, eight yeah, note yeah. section. That's how you're, you're breaking it up. And so every time you land somewhere on the neck, and this is what's starting to happen, I'm not like a master of this, but again, night and day difference from a few months ago, you just constantly know, it's easy to remember in that first part of the scale, like where the fifth is you know everyone knows where the fifth is on the power chord right you know or your third everyone kind of knows those two but past that where's your seventh where's your fourth at any given time within the scale on any part of the fretboard you know yeah. and yeah. that's what starts to happen because everything feels like that first little block you're breaking it into the little block so intervallic scale method and you can okay. look it up on youtube I'll, I'll look it up i'll look it up i needed to call you earlier
as we I just everything you said makes a little bit of sense to me. But yeah, at, yeah. At, pra at practice tonight, we're we're working on our new song. Dave's last night's new song, "The Wolf Headed Rooster," and yes. the last the last chord of that song that I play is a really interesting chord to me. It's like basically what I'm going for is I wanted my distorted electric guitar to sound like a a horror movie scream, like a woman scream, like that. Freaking! I I wanted to end on that just shriek, just terrified shriek. And the chord pattern I found, I did it in practice today, and I held the chord out. I always hold it out a little bit and play with it at the end. And I turned it clean and I strummed it. And I said, you know what, guys? I really need to ask somebody who knows how to play guitar what the name of this chord is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's me. I don't know a lot of chord names, honestly. Well, but, you know, you see the chord names, it's like E suspended minor seven with the fifth. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. The, the E suspended blue, 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 and the little Bs and the, and the hashtags and stuff on there. Yep, like, yeah. I'm not, I'm not that kind of guitar player. I think you're yeah. on the, you're on a journey to where you're going to be that. I'm, so, I'm heading in that direction. I am starting to learn, like, there is a jazz song. Well, if you even call it now, now, a funk jazz now, song. Yeah. Now I'm going to have to because you are. So now I'm going to have to, and you're putting all this extra work on me. And, <laughs> I like that about you. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, we drive each other. That's the whole thing. Like, and that's the thing about momentum and all that. Like, it keeps propelling each other. It's a, it's a fun collaboration. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah I, well, if I know what, once I see it, we could figure out what notes it is in the scale. And then we could just, I, from there, we could figure out what the chord is. But I just need to know what the numbers are of, of the I can, within the scale. Yeah, so what I'll, I'll do a little fun project tonight. And uh, we can yeah. talk about it on the next podcast when we figure out okay. what the chord is. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, draw, I'll, I'll draw, draw it out like tabs and, and fingers on there and I'll, I'll take what it. I like though is that you that was your inspiration for the chord you searched for was that it was trying to be a howling terror I like... wanted it just ow! I wanted it to sound like that when I send you when I send you the chord I want yes. you to play like I want you to pull it and just like hit it and okay. like break it and play with it and you'll hear like it man it sounds it sounds like a scream. It's the only way I can describe. Cool, like, hey, cool. Do you know what key the song is in? Is yeah, it in a single key? We're in C G C F A D, and it is it is in C. The key is in C, and the okay. The end, the end of the root. I'm not going to try to do the guitar in here on the on the podcast, but yeah. The end. The end of the root is is in like an open. It scales up. It goes like a one, two, three, three four like in the okay. move of hands the first one the second the third the third again and then uh -huh. the fourth is the fourth is just i take the last note and i just twist it and uh -huh. it becomes the scream i just i i switch my higher it's 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 all four fingers on different, different strings yeah it's okay. inverted but it, it's inverted on the high three not the lower one it's only a single okay. a single fret on the on the a string and then i'm fretting the bottom three the d the b and the g in such a way and i'm, I'm up high like close to the 12th fret and it's a yeah. really it's inverted and it's almost a power chord but it's not because okay. it's only the one finger and then the three it's just a weird yeah. it's my favorite chord. It's the screen chord it's the, well, the string because what i find a lot of my and we're getting we're at our point but i yeah, as far yeah, as yeah. chords go i you know there's so many chords that i play in songs i don't i i've never now i'm actually going into the songs and trying to understand what the hell i did better just to know like yeah what oh that and i'm learning i'm like oh that's what i was doing here this was a triad that whole time i didn't even realize this was considered a triad. It, <laughs> i just called it the doodly do thing this is because you we, yeah you and i, I both knew play, it's a shape. play by, by feel and by the way we hear and the way it makes us feel that's right and i don't want to lose that in this like i've that's why i kind of avoided getting specific about this stuff because i don't there is something about once you can label something that you're limited to the label and so like you know you feel like it's easy to fall in the camp of like this is how it's supposed to be this is the scale that's the scale but it's like when i'm playing my old kill Cluso stuff i'm like oh yeah this shit is not that no wonder this sounded different to me because it's not traditional scaling there's a lot of stuff where it's like i wouldn't if i was only traditionally taught i wouldn't have thought to go to this like you normally don't play that note in in this key like that but that's what makes it cool and a lot of metal is that 
a lot of metal puts in some discorded note that wouldn't traditionally be in a scale, some weird half step somewhere. And that's, yeah. that's metal. I mean, that's a lot of, and I'm like, okay, that makes it, sense. It I sense. like that. Yeah, yeah it, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Dude, what a great technical episode. I think that, uh, guys, if you sat in and listened yeah. to this, I mean, hopefully, I think that was a pretty fun conversation. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, is... great time. <laughs> <laughs> too. Um, Cue the Muses is our show. You guys know about it. I, I This is the one time, first time in all the episodes, I'm not going to play our two-minute um, commercial yeah, for it. We'll play it next time. Yeah. We'll, yeah, give, it, we'll but, give it to you guys next time. It's been awesome. It's yeah, been a man. great conversation. I'm so excited about the video. I'm going to watch the the, the, oh, thanks, the new Chevelle. It's, the Chevelle. it's Chevelle, right? Yeah. Yeah, if you do um, 70 SS, it's probably going to pop okay. up and it's going to put that picture of a, a car in front of a jet, you know? That's so right. A new Chevelle in front of a jet, that's the video. And yeah, I look forward to you getting to check it out. Check it out when you have time where you can actually watch it. But dude, I am definitely proud of what it is. I, I think it's the, pretty entertaining from start to finish, but um, oh, we'll, we'll see what I you think. I can't wait. I can't <laughs> right, wait. Cool. I'm... I'm I'm gonna crash tonight, and then I, I might. Yeah. I don't want to watch it and like be all tired. And no, it you you can check it out next week. I, I, it doesn't matter. It it's just there. Whenever you have time to actually watch when I, it, that's when to watch. I'll get. I'll I'll be home tomorrow. What I'll do is I'll pull it up in the studio and put it put it in the monitor room. Oh, I'll, that'd I'll be cool, man. Because dude, I worked. Yeah. I spent so much time just on the audio and the sound design and the songs I chose. Yeah, and, man. I mean, there I, there's like two weeks just on audio alone on the edit. So. But what I'm not going to do is watch it on this. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. I am not going to watch your video for the first time on this or this cool. laptop for that matter. Right on, man. Well. I yeah. appreciate I'm gonna, that. I'm going to watch it in the studio. Cool, cool dude. man. Sounds have great. A great. Have a great night, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us for an hour. Yeah, bye, guys. We're, we're Dick and Ash. We'll see you next time. Booyah. <laughs>